going to modify the door controls to add illumination to the window and lock switch. Uh, so what I have is the back of the uh, passenger side here. I've uh, already depressed the two tabs and removed the uh, window switch. As you can see, there's uh, very little space within the switch to actually install the LEDs. So what I want to focus on is uh, taking the uh, plastic around the switch and putting LEDs in that. Here you can see the actual uh, door lock switch and when you depress it, it actually hits the switch. So putting LEDs into the actual switch assembly again isn't uh, very possible. Drill for the uh, door lock um, at the very bottom of the assembly for the window. Uh, there's a flat spot here where the plastic molding curves up and as close as you can get to that to drill into the side uh, to put the hole for the LED. Once I determine the amount of light needed by using the potentiometer, I would then take a meter, determine the amount of resistance, and then replace this with a resistor of the known value. Here I've got the passenger side uh, switch panel. You can see where I've mounted the LEDs. Uh, I've got a resistor here. I only put one per switch, but you could uh, probably put two if you wanted more of a halo effect. I have the driver's door control module here, and I've added four LEDs, rear, rear middle, front middle, and front, and then the associated wiring. Hardest part on this is making sure to keep your wiring and connections recessed. As you can see, you have to keep it within the side there so you can't see it. Otherwise, when you try to put this module back into the door, it won't fit because of the overlap of uh, the wiring or any associated uh, uh, hot glue or anything you're using to hold the uh, the wiring in place. Um, I already tried this out. The only thing is is that the light comes through the front of the uh, buttons here and it kind of casts a little bit of a, uh, a ghost on the uh, actual door. So if I were to do it differently I might move these LEDs just a little bit or blank out the top of them so that it illuminates the panel without creating the, uh, the little gaps here allowing the light to hit the, uh, the side of the door. On the front driver door, I drilled a 3 16th inch hole above the door handle and placed an LED. I tried to position the LED uh, towards the back so that way it will shine down on the handle. In this case, I also used a very high ohm resistor to make the light dim so that at night it won't blind you and during the day you'll probably hardly notice it's there. I terminated my ends. This is for the uh, ground lighting. This is for the panel lighting and I've added an extra ground wire there so I could branch off the turn signal wiring and run it up to the corner here so I can make a junction here so I don't have to remove the door skin if I decide to change something with the turn signal. I've got the driver and passenger side uh, ground lights right here. I crimped them in such a way I've left one end open if I want to add something else to that circuit later. Same with the panel lights, driver, passenger side. I sourced that from key switched power but you could hook it to the parking lights if you wanted. For the ground on the door, I ran over here. There's a uh, screw holding the dash. Uh, it was a good spot to ground. It's a halo effect around the switches when it's turned on. You have to make sure to keep the LEDs all the way in and the wiring tucked up so that it uh, clears the edge here. I have the lights ready to go. We'll see what happens. As you can see, you got a uh, nice little light here for the uh, door handle. So you can see that and then the lock. Um, each one of the buttons has a halo effect around it and when you push down on the window buttons uh, it gives a little extra burst of light and uh, you can see up here with the uh, door lock. Uh, the only bad thing was where I positioned the light I see it got a little bit of a ghosting up here where it kind of comes up onto the door but otherwise everything looks good.